What's going on everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for watching. Today's video is going to be on one of my all-time favorite rifles, the Kalashnikov. So you all know I absolutely love AKs and we finally have enough of them to make a video like this. So yes, we have four different AKs on the table today that span a pretty good price range. Now two of these I've never shot before. So the two on the ends were loaners from BFF Firearms in Danville, Illinois, and the two in the middle are mine that I own. So I wanna thank BFF, of course, for making this video possible, but we're gonna shoot all of these rifles and see if we notice a difference between the cheap AKs and the more expensive ones. So the rifles we have out here today are the Arsenal Sam 7 7.62x39, the Wasser 10 7.62x39, the Arsenal 5.45x39, that one's my baby, and the Zestava ZPAP 7.62x39. So a lot of people like to say an AK is an AK. As long as they're built fairly decent, they all work about the same. I'm not so sure about that, and the only way to find out is to shoot them all. So the AK is probably the most abundant rifle on the planet. Tons of countries make them, which is why there are so many options and variations you could get. There should honestly be way more, but because of political reasons and import bans and stuff like that, we can't get a lot of the AKs that we should be able to. It's also why pricing them is so difficult. So just because you see a really high price tag on an AK doesn't necessarily mean it's made or built any better than a cheaper one. A lot of them are just rare and hard to get, which obviously drives the price up. Now, I've never tried any of the American-made AKs, so I can't really speak on those. They will be cheaper than a lot of these on the table, but for the most part, the best AKs do come from overseas. But we have a lot of guns out here, so let's start shooting. But really quick before we go any further, guys, I want to give a huge shout out to Eurooptic.com for sponsoring today's video. Eurooptic.com is a veteran-owned and operated company, which of course gets two thumbs up from me. And if you've all seen the 375 H&H Magnum big game rifle that I got a few months back, I actually got that from Eurooptic.com, so I can verify everything I'm about to say because I have used this website myself. So Eurooptic does real-time inventory, meaning if you check out the website, everything you see listed as in stock is actually in stock. There's no drop shipping games or delayed back order notifications or nothing like that. If you see something you want and it's listed as in stock, you can buy it right then and there. They also do same-day shipping, which is the one thing I noticed when I bought my rifle from them was how quickly it was shipped. And with their red shipping, they do one and two day delivery commitments at no extra charge to you. So you buy it within a day or two, you're actually holding it in your hands, which is pretty incredible. So basically they have all the cool stuff, they ship it fast, and most importantly, it gets to you fast. Again, that is eurooptic.com, E-U-R-O-O-P-T-I-C.com. Now, back to the video. All right, we'll go ahead and go cheapest and most expensive, starting with the Wasser 10. Used to be really affordable, not so much anymore. Definitely overgassed. <laughs> you can see how far it's throwing those shell casings. Yeah. But it works. All right, next up we have the Zestava ZPAP M70. You can see that shiny bolt carrier group. This is probably the nicest looking AK that I have out here today. And I would say it's right behind the Wasser in terms of price. All these are gonna be over a thousand bucks, except maybe the Wasser. Didn't used to be that way, but AKs are more expensive now. Let's see how this one feels. Way less recoil than the Wasser. That's pretty incredible. Looks like it's ejecting fine. That's probably the softest AK I've ever shot. <laughs> so I'm obviously left-handed, as you can see, and this one has the slant break on the end of the barrel, which is designed for a right-handed shooter. So if you're right-handed, it works pretty well at keeping the rifle straight and recoiling to the rear instead of up and away. Well, as a lefty, because I'm shooting with the wrong arm, it actually sends it further off to the side than it would if it was just a regular muzzle break. So not the best recoil, but still way better than the Wasser. <laughs> and the Arsenal Sam 7. So Arsenals are widely considered to be, for the most part, good AKs. They had a run there for a little while where they were kind of inconsistent. Um, and you definitely pay for them because these things are not cheap. I would say this one's probably 12 to $1,600 now. It used to be under a grand like the rest of them. Uh, but yeah, not cheap. Let's see how it feels. Beautiful. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, all this is doing is showing me how overgassed my Wasser is because so far both of these have had way less recoil than mine. So I probably put Arsenal at the top of the list, but I still think the Zestava looks way better. And of course, it wouldn't be an AK video without the 545 AK-74. So this is also an Arsenal and probably the most expensive one on the list. I got this in 2013 or 2014 for 1200 bucks, and now it's crazy. They're going for over two grand in some cases. So just because they're priced that high doesn't mean they're worth it, um, but right now, this is the most expensive AK on the list, just because it's an AK-74 and they're not quite as common. No recoil. <laughs> it's obviously not a fair comparison, but. Just one of the nicest and most pleasant rifles to shoot that you'll ever find. I'm getting close to 10,000 rounds on this thing and I've never had one single malfunction, so pretty reliable gun as well. Well, I just realized you can rotate that slant brake for a left-handed shooter, so we're definitely gonna do that after this magazine. But one thing that makes AK so reliable is how violent the action is. They chuck shell casings into outer space, and pretty much anything that's in there is gonna come out. But with this one, I've noticed every five or six rounds, it just kind of barely falls out the ejection port. It hasn't malfunctioned yet, um, but I'm gonna shoot this right-handed. See if you notice how it ejects these shell casings. Hopefully it happens. I'm gonna shoot that Yeti cooler. And that is a soft shooting AK. That kind of changes things because I would put this even with the Arsenal now that I've shot it right handed. The only downside is the triangle stock. But hopefully you can see the shell casings. It's not malfunctioning, uh, so I can't say it's a bad thing. It's just different and not quite as aggressive as the other rifles. Now watch the Arsenal and look how far it ejects these things. Yeah, those are literally going over the hill. <laughs> Let's try the 545 AK, see how it does. Oh yeah, <laughs> that, that might be the furthest. And that's why I said it's just not fair to compare this to the other ones. It is so much nicer to shoot. But again, uh, that's one of the things that make AK so reliable. Even if they're not overgassed, just the operating system chucks shell casings and any other debris that might be in the rifle and helps keep it running. And the Zestava is the only one that's ejecting a little weird, but it's not malfunctioning. So I would say it's good to go. All right, I rotated the slant brake. Let's see how this puppy feels left-handed. Oh yeah. About to knock that target over. <laughs> yeah, that is extremely soft for a 7.62 AK. I tell you what, it's almost neck and neck between this and the Arsenal after shooting it like that. All right guys, well I'll be the first one to admit I am biased towards the 5.45, but I must admit the 7.62 by 39 definitely has ballistic advantages and I'm gonna try to show you that right now. So on the table, we have five two by eight slabs of concrete with two liters in between them. We're gonna hit this with both rifles and see which bullet makes it further. So the 545 is going faster, but it's so small and lightweight, it shouldn't penetrate as well as the 762 by 39. Let's find out. We'll start with the 74. The only thing that worries me is if that concrete's too thick for either of them, it might be inconclusive, but we'll try. 545 first. We got through at least one. <laughs> There's a 50 BMG shell casing. I'm sure there's a few of those out here. All right, the 545 definitely went through at least one two liter, because I saw it from back there. And here's our concrete. So it looks like it just made it through the first one, which is about what I expected. All the other two liters 
are untouched. We've got one on the ground here, and then this is the one that the 545 actually hit, and boy, did it do some damage. Good grief. And here's the concrete block that our 545 hit. Probably not gonna find the bullet, but like I said, all the other two liters and concrete blocks are completely untouched. So let's see if the 762 can get through more than one. It's gonna be tough. All right, we've got three two liters and four blocks. I think that'll be more than enough to stop the 762. Using the Zastava for this one. Looks like the same result, which is what I was scared of. Well, I can definitely say the 762 hit with more authority and exploded the two liter more, but if there was someone hiding behind a concrete wall like that, I think both calibers would probably do the job, which can only mean one thing. The 545 is still superior. I'm joking. All right, let's take a look at the damage here. So like I said, we have two surviving two liters and three surviving concrete blocks. It's the exact same result that we got from the 545 and I don't see a chip in our second concrete block. There is a bullet fragment <laughs> right there, but the 545 split that block in two. The 762 split it in five or six. So definitely hit harder and here, is our two liter and that looks like a bullet holy crap or the jacket of a bullet at least so here's our two liter hit that one kind of high <laughs> but obviously just blew the top off so in terms of damage i would say it's a victory for the 762 but the 545 just can't take an l all right guys that's gonna do it for me today thank you all for watching i hope you enjoyed the video obviously my favorite rifle overall is the 545 ak-74 i'm just a 545 guy i prefer the caliber i would say the arsenal sam 7 and the zastava probably tied for first place for the 762 guns they're both way better than the wasser and they just feel better they shoot better um, i didn't expect there to be that much of a difference it honestly surprised me but that goes to show that if you pay a little bit more and get a higher quality ak you can absolutely feel the difference even in just shooting the rifle now the wasser is not a bad gun and i'm sure some of them aren't as overgassed as mine is but when you shoot a properly gassed ak you can definitely feel the difference so i hope you all enjoyed the video if you did please let me know down in the comments below as always hit that like button for me guys i'd really appreciate it thank you all for watching and i'll see you next time